Welcome back to my garden. Today we're going to talk about insects. We're going to cover pests and we're going to cover beneficial insects. The most common garden pest is the aphid. Aphids are typically little green soft-bodied insects that eat the sap out of your plants. What most people don't know is they're typically there because ants will farm them. Ants, and I don't know why, do not like to walk on cinnamon. Cinnamon is a wonderful spice to have if you're a gardener. Not only can you use it on your food, but you could use it to help save your plants. It is a natural fungicide, which means it deters fungus from growing. But it also keeps the ants from farming the aphids on your plants. All you do is you take your powdered cinnamon and you make a barrier on the soil around the plant you want to keep the ants off of. And it puts a lovely smell into your garden. Another way that you could deter aphids is with helping plants. Geraniums are one of the plants that you can pair with another. Typically, you find geraniums planted around rose bushes. The reason behind this is because rose bushes are one of aphids' favorite sources of food and sap. Geraniums put up a protective barrier around the plants that they're planted with, keeping the aphids away. Another one that helps to keep the aphids away are marigolds. However, they're more used for the mammal varieties, deers, squirrels, woodchucks, other small mammals. They don't like the marigolds. These are two of the most common annuals that are grown to help gardeners keep pests away from their plants. However, geraniums, even though they're sold as an annual, are a perennial. They just do not take the frost very well. So if you bring them in, you can overwinter them. I've never had much luck because I don't have a lot of light in my house. Um, they're also really easy to root. So when this one gets a little bit bigger, I will show you the main ways that you can root them or propagate them so you could have more of them without having to buy them. You're also able to buy ladybugs. However, this year before I was able to purchase mine, they sold out everywhere. So, I wasn't able to get ladybugs this year. But if you release ladybugs, they will eat the aphids and other small insects that typically eat your plants. So if you have ladybugs coming into your garden, you want to keep them there. Because they're helping you keep all the pests away. Um, and then there's praying mantises. Now you can buy sacks of praying mantis eggs and I know for fact that Amazon has them. They're not as common, common as buying live ladybugs. You could buy those in any garden section of any big box store or you could buy them online. Now praying mantis eggs I have not personally had dealings with. Um, but I did have Mr. Mantis last year living in my cucumber planter and he was eating everything. He'd eat spiders, wasps, bumblebees. Now, 
bumblebees and honeybees, they're your main pollinators. You want, they're a beneficial insect that you want in your garden. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But they, they were eating the aphids, the spider mites, the, the mantis was eating every pest that came into my garden. He even ate the thrip. <laughs> so, that is, that's a good guy to have in your garden. Just don't mess with him because he'll pinch you. <laughs> he'll bite you and it hurts. And um, also, if you live in the state of Connecticut, praying mantis are the state insect. Which means that if you do anything to harm them, you're breaking the law. So, you want to leave your garden buddies alone. <laughs> now... Spider mites are my nemesis, and I found that the best way to deal with them is to buy predatory mites. Um, I use predatory mites in my house, however, since they got rid of the fungus gnats and the, the spider mites that I had in there, they went and ate themselves, so I don't think I have any left, but I haven't really inspected the soil to see if I have them left. Now, they eat the larva. They eat the spider mites. They go after everything that is small enough for them to eat. They do not eat your plants, and they do not bite you. Um, but they don't like a frost, and they don't like when stuff dries out. So, that combined with the price, I'm not going to be buying them for my outdoor gardens. Because what I do at the end of the season is I take my planters and I put them in the basement. And, uh, typically, I wind up forgetting to water them because they're in the basement. And I don't go down there that often. But it does get cold. So, it is what it is, but predatory mites, look them up. I got mine off of Amazon. I don't know if they sell them in stores or if it's an online only purchase, but they'll keep your aphids and your spider mites away. Now, the next garden pest on my list is one that gave me a hard time last year. I had thrip. Thrip came into my garden, and I thought they were the coolest thing ever. They looked like little itty bitty bumblebees, little itty bitty bitty ones, and it looked like they were pollinating my cucumbers. No, 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 no. They were laying eggs, and their larvae was eating the sap out of my cucumbers and causing my cucumbers to curve. I had J-shaped cucumbers, and some looked like horns, like Viking drinking horns. So I did my research and I found out that garlic keeps them away. So as you can see, I have my spray bottle from last year and it's filled with water and garlic cloves. And this is to keep them from coming back. And all I do is I spray my plant. Ooh. I spray my plants with a mist and I spray my soil and I cover everything and I do this every day because I don't want the thrip coming this year. Okay now with spider mites. Spider mites are more difficult to get rid of. You can use insecticidal soap However, if you cannot get your hands on that, you can use a little bit of dish soap. The only issue with the dish soap mixed with the water making a spray is it takes the waxy coating off of the leaves and leaves them more susceptible to fungal disease, more susceptible to sun scold, and more susceptible to other insects. And they wind up slowly dying from the sun. In order to counteract that, 
you can use willow's root. If you can't get willow's root, a synthetic version of it is found in aspirin. So after you treat for the bugs with the dish soap, spray it again with willow's root or aspirin water. Now, now, if that doesn't work, there is a more potent solution. It's called pyrethrin. Now, pyrethrin sounds like a chemical, but it comes from chrysanthemum. Now this is found in most household pesticides as a percentage. And if you have children that go to schools, you might be well aware that it's also found in most head lice treatment. It's a kill on contact and it does not stick around. There is a synthetic version of it out in stores that does stick around and you want to stay away from that if you can, especially if you're growing edible foods. So this is my bottle of pyrethrin in case my spider mites come back. However, when you're using pyrethrin, you don't want to use it alone. You want to spray just like I did with the garlic all over the plant. Top, bottom of the petals, stem, bottom of the leaves, top, bottom, and spray the top surface of the soil so that any of the ones that have hatched die on contact. And then you want to get what's called neem oil, which is taken from a tree. It's also organic. And you want to soak your soil with the neem oil so that when the eggs hatch, they will not live long enough to reproduce again. The neem oil sticks around for a little bit, so don't put it on the leaves, don't put it on the stem, because I'm not sure how long it takes for that to go away, and I'm not sure how much effort it's going to be to wash it off in order to eat your food. But it is an organic chemical. Again, neem comes from a tree. Now, insects are not the only garden pests you have. You have your squirrels, your woodchucks, turkeys, you have deer. Depending on where you live, you might have more. Now, for most small mammals, especially squirrels, cayenne pepper works great. Now, they don't go after every single plant. They have ones that they prefer. They like melons, they like squash, they like beans, peas. Sunflowers are their favorite. Sprinkle cayenne pepper around the dirt. You can mix some crushed red pepper in the dirt when you plant cayenne pepper on the top. This will keep them from coming back. It's not going to cause permanent damage to them. It will irritate them enough for them not to come back and dig again. It's also good if you make bird feeders um, to mix this in with the seeds so that the squirrels and the chipmunks don't eat the seeds on the birds. Another method that's a little less painful is to take bird seed if you have squirrels in your garden. You know, cracked corn, sunflower seeds, etc. Wild bird seed. Put it in a bowl by your garden. They are more likely to go after that bowl than your plants. Each day, you move that bowl further away from your garden. Then, further and further each day until you're all the way on the opposite side of your property. 
that is going to teach them that they go over there for food, not to your garden. However, if you do that method, you're going to have to continue feeding them over there. Otherwise, they will come back to your garden looking for food. Now, slugs and caterpillars are mainly an early spring problem. They come in and they eat your leaves. Well, if you don't want to go out and buy slug killer, you have several options. The first, you can pick them off of your plants and move them to the opposite side of your property. Another is salt. You can put salt on them, but if you use too much salt, you could be harming your plants. My favorite alternative is organic matter. As you can see, I have some dried out lettuce. Now, I take the uh, outer layers of lettuce off when I buy it and I discard that before I wash it. Just a personal preference, but you take your lettuce, you take fruit peels, you can take the trimmings off of your plants and you use it like a mulch around everything. And not only will it break down extremely quickly and feed your plant, but it gives these nasty pests something else to eat instead. So the smaller the piece you have, the quicker it breaks down and feeds your plant. But if you want to keep the bugs away, don't make the pieces too small. You still want moisture to get into your soil. So don't necessarily cover it all up because if it starts composting and it's piled up, one, it's going to stink. And if you live in an apartment complex or you have close neighbors, they might start complaining. And two, when compost starts to decompose, it forms a shield on the outside, trapping moisture in. But it also prevents mo moisture from the outside getting in. So if you have a plant underneath all that, now the soil's not getting water, and the plant's kind of dehydrating because it can't get the water from the soil. So with rabbits. Rabbits typically cannot climb up enough like three feet. They can't jump over a three foot fence. So you could put fencing around unless you have really large rabbits. So just base it on the size of rabbit you have. Where I live the rabbits aren't that big. So chicken wire they can't fit through it and they can't climb up it. So you can put that around your garden you could raise your garden up like I did. Um, this is about two feet up. And they like to eat everything. Everything from sunflowers to tree bark. So you could put plastic around your trees if they're tiny until they get larger so they don't chew the bark off, which could kill your tree. Um, go up about the height of a rabbit would be from nose to tail and add about six inches a foot this way if they stand up on their hind legs you've got that all covered but also they're like the little mammals i was talking about before the squirrels and chipmunks and woodchucks and whatnot you put the cayenne pepper down and again you have to do it after every rain but it gets rid of them. They don't come back. Um, the other thing is I've noticed this year I have ants farming aphids on my tomatoes. Now it's not all the tomatoes. They started on my dill. I took care of that. But they moved on to my tomatoes. I've got 
two tomatoes I was excited about. My black Russian crim tomato and my mule team tomato. And they started farming aphids on it. So I did my treatment just like I told you for aphids, but they're gonna keep coming back until I take care of the ants. So I gotta get some borax and mix it in little bottle caps. Bye. Little bottle caps, mix a little borax and a little jelly, and in a second one, a little borax and a little peanut butter. This way, no matter if the ant likes sweet things or protein things, you've got that covered. They eat the borax, they bring it back to their hive, the borax kills the entire hive. Um, borax is a powdered laundry detergent. So it is like putting soapy water on your plants. Um, I think that about covers it. I'm most likely missing some pests. I covered aphids, thrips, spider mites, ants, squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits, slugs, and caterpillars. Vine borers. I almost forgot vine borers. I found nothing really works with vine borers. Once they get in, the damage is already done. And you don't know that they are there until they're in your vines. And um, pyrethrin and neem oil won't do anything to stop them. Uh, the moth lays its eggs in the soil and they're so microscopic you cannot see it by looking at it. Those eggs hatch and go at soil level into your vine and they eat all up the stem of the vine and once you see the hole there's gonna be a lot of brown goop around it. I uh, I filmed it last year. You can cut the vine open and take them out, but if you miss one, your plant's dead. And there's going to be multiple of those worms inside uh, inside your vines. Um, you could go to my playlist that says apartment gardening, and I show the whole procedure best that I could do without a tripod and um, explain everything because vines you bury them in the dirt they'll grow more roots so you don't have to feel bad about slicing your vine open down long ways and taking these things out but that's really the only effective way to do it Mom. so I'll see you over at the flower bed for beneficial insects thank you So, the last beneficial insect, your pollinators. Pollinators don't typically go to your vegetable plants first and foremost. They look for flowers, things that bloom before your vegetable crops do. Why, whenever you grow a vegetable garden, you want to have a flower bed nearby. This draws in your pollinators. And it encour and it encourages them to stick around. Okay, so when you're making your flower bed, you could put whatever you want for aesthetically pleasing. But try your hardest to have flowers that bloom at different stages. Forget-me-nots. Daffodils. Oh. Forget-me-nots, daffodils, tulips, hyacinths, crocuses. Those are your first flowers in the spring to bloom. Those are what you're looking for to have the pollinators drawn in. But their blooms don't last long. So you want other things to come up right afterwards and that you want to try and make it so that your flower bed is a continual cascade of blooming all the way up into the fall 
and I know one of the last flowers to bloom I don't personally have. They're Jerusalem artichokes, also known as sunchokes, and they bloom all the way up to the first frost. For me, my last blooms are going to be my sunflowers. Well, technically Anastasia's sunflowers because the flower bed is hers. She's got echinacea, she's got mint, she's got Alaskan daisies, she has poppies. I have my hollyhock um, in her garden. We have lots of flowers that will bloom all season long. And now, in my region, the end of May to the middle end of June is when our forget-me-nots bloom. There are forget-me-nots in here. There's even some basil in here. You want a little oasis for your pollinators. Not only do you want to draw them in, you want to keep them coming back. You want to keep them there all season. You want them to come back next year. You take care of your pollinators, and your pollinators will take care of you. So, thank you all for tuning in to my beneficial insects and pest video. And I hope you enjoyed it and found it very helpful and informative. I know that I may have forgotten some things or I may not have mentioned some things. However, I'm only putting out there what I've been able to research or confirm through my own experiences. I don't want to give any misinformation. So if you want to leave comments down below to help other people who watch the video, please do. Also, Share the video with your garden enthusiastic friends. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Give us a thumbs up if you found it informative. Give us a thumbs up if it was helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a wonderful day.